it's something that just called out to me. I, I couldn't understand my addiction to creativity. So I said, well, then why don't you just call it that? Call it an addiction to creativity. And I had no idea what that was all about, but I knew that I was on a lifelong journey to discover what it really is all about. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut, because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. I can see change within this forest. The leaves are starting to lose their color of green. The early starters of a new season have showcased the dance, the flight from limb to the wooded floor below. My, my, how fast time is soaring. And yet, I've never heard any of these trees complain about the ticks on the clock. They always appear to be grateful. Of all places on the planet, they landed here. And somehow, they have found incredible amounts of joy. As a human being, what does any of this mean? Why are we constantly challenging our own personal roots to always want to grow on the other side of the fence? The exact behavior of a self-designed tortured heart tosses the leaves from the trees. Inner creations that influence the mental behaviors of a wild ride on a railroad of process and purpose. For if I am to be silent, it shall always come with moments of argument. Change has come with fight and that means leaves will fall before midnight. To be ready requires mindfulness, to be less of a judger and more of an activator. And that's only one step on a mile-long journey. We do kind of argue with everything, don't we? Even if we know that we're wrong, we're still going to pick a fight. And when we're right, we still want to pick a fight. But yet, I'm sitting inside the studio staring at these trees, and they all look very happy. The pine needles in the center of winter, they're bright green. And yet the other limbs of the other trees, they're not jealous of the pines because the pines probably offer them warmth during this cold weather. It's only like 30 degrees this morning. So the, the elms and all the other ones, the cypress, are leaning up against the white pines and they're saying, thank you, brother. Thank you for the warmth. But do we do that as humans? Do we? I mean, I mean, you, you, you read the stories and being that it's Christmas, a lot of people are giving and they'll give up until probably the end of the year. And then by January 2nd, all that giving, those, those warm moments will be gone for the majority why is it we're this way have you ever sat back and wondered or is it too much weight for your heart how much do you give i don't give enough i i, I think i do but no in reality when you look at the entire picture it's never enough it's almost like my dog jazzy i was talking to my wife about this this morning that we could put food in front of her five times a day and all five times she would eat it until it was gone she, she doesn't graze. She's, she's not one of those dogs that, you know, that will sit there and leave a little bit in the bowl and come back about, you know, two hours later. She doesn't do that. I think it's because it represents who we are, that, that if there's something placed in front of us, we all devour it immediately and then want more. And even though you are full, you want more and more and more. So as we begin to mature through our years of, of unwritten chapters, you have to wonder, when does more become too much and when we have too much where are we storing it we're hoarding it a very good friend of mine john he opened up my eyes to what we really are and that is hoarders hoarders in the way of when you have a job and you want another job and you take out another job and another job you're hoarding jobs because you have this inner fear of failure you have this, this, this horrible feeling that something's going to go wrong, but that's okay. I've got a net. I've got a net. I've got a net. I've got a net. How do you break that habit? When is more too much? I look at these trees this morning. Low 30s. The pines are keeping the elms nice and warm because the elm don't have leaves. They don't have to have more to survive. I think we can learn from this. These aren't my words. These are the lyrics from Billy's Forest.